Well, we're spending more time at home, right? Are you spending more time in the kitchen? In front of the fridge, if you're looking to get some of that extra snacking that many of us has been doing under control, we've got some tips with registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner. And uh, an interesting exercise in eating over the last uh, couple of months for sure, Andrea. Let's start with that mindless eating, that just wandering towards the snacks without even thinking about it. Yeah, so mindless eating is, of course, uh, just total distracted eating. And what we find with a lot of the clients we're working with right now, visual or virtually, is that um, it, mindless eating happens when we're beside our computer or we're watching Netflix or we're by, um, you know, doing and multitasking something else. So just a, a friendly, gentle reminder, when you are eating, only eat. And it's a great thing to teach your families as well. Um, no technology at the table is an absolute like hard rule at our house. So I'd encourage you to implement that at your home and have your kids hold you accountable. Because if you bring your phone to the dinner table, I can get, I can bet that they're going to actually nudge you and, uh, and call you on that bad habit. Oh yeah, that's, that's a really good tip. When you're going to eat, only eat, not, not grab, go, not, um, scan your phone, not watching Netflix, just eat. A visual trigger to eat can be a pretty powerful thing, Andrea. Oh yes, so as we've moved home, we're working from home, we're schooling from home, I call this the seafood diet. So <laughs> pretty much what we see on our counters is likely going to trigger us to eat. And so you can imagine there's been like a baking fest going on right now with the COVID situation. So if there's a plate full of brownies or a container of cookies on the counter and maybe you're not really wanting to do something for work, feeling a little bored, you're procrastinating, what our brain does is it seeks pleasure and it repels pain. So because our brain is looking for pleasure, of course, it's way more fun to eat the brownies on the counter than it is to do that dreaded work task that you now have to kind of try and self-motivate yourself to do. So my suggestion is um, we want to keep food and hard to manage types of foods out of our sight line. And, you know, food psychology research has really shown when we actually put things in the counter, in the, the pantry, we put them in the freezer. Of course, our brain still knows they're there, but it does decrease overall consumption of harder to manage foods. So what we want to keep in our sight line is exactly what I got in my in my um, uh, kitchen behind me here, we want to keep some of those healthier foods that we're trying to eat more of visually triggering us so that if we are going to be snacking, it's going to be on things like the bowl of raw carrots and snap peas or the bowl of grapes or whatever it might be that's probably fruits and vegetables that we all need to eat a little bit more of. Does that get easier, uh, Andrea, uh, once you start doing it? I would say yes. So our brain, again, when we are bored, and this ties into sort of this next point on emotional eating, if we're sad, if we're mad, if we're bored, uh, procrastinating um, something, again, our brain is going to look for something to help kind of numb that uncomfortable feeling. So it's seeking pleasure always. And so the more that we kind of take away from some of those like harder to manage foods and keep them out of our sight, the more at least we've removed that, removed that visual trigger, which then leads us to only having to battle more of that emotional trigger. So um, everything we can do to help support a healthier lifestyle by what we're bringing into the house and then what we're visually seeing in the house is definitely going to be an important factor. All right, instead of reaching for the chocolate when the mad, sad, down, anxious moment hits, what are some things we can keep in mind? So when it comes to emotional eating, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody does emotionally eat, even dietitians. Hey, I'm the chocoholic dietitian. And, you know, through this period of so much uncertainty, I can say, yes, there was definitely some more chocolate eating in my house. So just acknowledge that it is absolutely normal. So the idea is that we're not trying to eliminate all emotional eating when we're either bored or sad or mad, but we want to get a handle on it so that it doesn't become the go-to crutch every time we're feeling sad or angry or anxious. 
And the best way to start with that is really look at what, what time of the day is my most challenging emotionally eating time of day. And for a lot of people, that's the evening when we're kind of beaten down by the, the work day, the homeschooling day, and we're trying to unwind and maybe our willpower and our defenses are a little bit down. And so at that time of the day, what I'm going to encourage you to do is think about a way to interrupt that habit. So what we know in psychology is um, what we call delay and distract. And so if the go-to is, oh, I'm feeling like unsettled and anxious about what's happening right now, and maybe that's um, chocolate chip cookie time of the day or, or nachos and cheese time of the day, and you know that you're not physically hungry and it's really more of an emotional hunger, what you want to do is insert a different new habit there. And it's going to be unappealing. I'm not going to lie. Who, nothing is better than eating. It's very enjoyable to do. But what we want to do is get our brain anchored into there's a different way to deal with that emotion. And so delaying and distracting it is, hmm, okay, I feel like eating chocolate chip cookies. Instead, I'm going to go download a new playlist of music um, that's inspiring and uplifting or relaxing, whatever it might be, first, and then give yourself permission to emotionally eat after that. And the key is if you give yourself permission to do it after, what we're doing is that our, it becomes that much more like, okay, that you might consider doing this activity. And the other thing it does is it just puts a little bit of time, distraction, and, and delay to help slow your brain down. Because what we're doing is we're just like a muscle. We're trying to build a new habit. And so it's not always going to work. But even if we, even if this strategy works maybe one in every two times or one in every eight times, it's still a good toolkit um, option for dealing with emotional eating. Oh, that's a good one uh, because that is me in a nutshell right there, like so many of us right now. Thanks, Andrea, for those great tips. Healthstandnutrition.com is Andrea's website. You can get some great info on there. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks so much for having me.